Welcome to Crime Time TV. I'm Barry Forshaw. I'm the author of Crime Fiction, A Reader's Guide, and I have a copy of it here. In fact, it's a book which began as a much smaller book, this one. It began as something for Penguin called A Rough Guide to Crime Fiction. But as you can see, there is quite a difference between the two books. Uh, what I'm going to try to do is give you a kind of very speedy rundown of chapter by chapter, starting just with this section, with chapter one, of what the book is basically about and what it tried to do. It's my magnum opus. I've been writing about crime fiction for many years, and I wanted to finally write a book which started with the people I met when I was a very young man, people like Patricia Highsmith and, and Hitchcock on one occasion, um, to include both films and books in the, in the crime idiom. And... Uh, where possible to use stories of people that I've met over the years, from Patricia Cornwell to James Elroy to Ruth Rendell and so forth. I think I've been lucky enough to meet most of the giants. The, the first chapter, which is called Reading the Entrails, is, of course, about the start of crime fiction. And the, and the question I'm asked most often is, what is the first crime fiction novel or plot? Well, that's fairly easy. There's the story about a man who... Is trying to find out who has murdered his father, and it's him. It's Oedipus Rex, who, of course, marries his mother and kills his father. And essentially, that is the kernel of a crime plot. Some people have argued that um, Cain and Abel is the first crime plot, if you like, and possibly it is. Uh, and there are a lot of people like Peter James who argue for Shakespeare and Macbeth. Macbeth has certainly been remade as, um, as a gangster thriller. What I tried to do in the first chapter was to talk about people like Dickens, who had created the first um, serious copper, if you like, in, in fiction with, with Inspector Bucket in Bleak House. Uh, but it was his friend, Wilkie Collins, who essentially created the, the essence of the crime novel with the woman in white and the moonstone. I don't know when you read either of those two novels recently, but I'll give you for my tuppence worth I think The Woman in White is still utterly superb and has the first great villain in crime fiction, Count Fosco, who has disgusting personal habits. I mean, he's a foreigner for a start, so that marks him out as a, as a villain. But he has small white mice that he secretes about his body that move about, that move from pocket to pocket. It's a lovely, unpleasant detail that Wilkie Collins puts in. The plot is utterly outrageous, um, so he kind of set the... Uh, the hallmark, if you like, of crime plots for many years hence. The Moonstone, I think, l reads less well these days, but it's still immensely important as one of the first important crime novels. But I was just going to talk about the two men who essentially uh, launched the, the, the crime story. The first used to live uh, a very short distance from where I am now in Islington. He uh, was an unhappy schoolboy in Stoke Newington. And his name was, of course, Edgar Allan Poe, the man who is not only the, probably the greatest writer in the horror genre and a great poet, but also the man who created a lot of the tropes in, in crime fiction. I made a note of some of the things that he created. It's rather like in, in science fiction, H.G. Wells created lots of the, the tropes that are still in, in play today. But um, Edgar Allan Poe created the, the puzzle story. He created the locked room uh, mystery, or he wrote the first important locked room mystery, Murders in the Room Morgue, which also features the first important detective, if you like, uh, Auguste Dupin, Chevalier Auguste Dupin, who is the first uh, uh, character who uses intelligence as not a two fisted hero, but uh, uses intelligence. Poe also created cryptography in The Gold Bug. Uh, the Least Likely Suspect, Thou Art the Man. Uh, the Mutilation, the horror of the crime story. People thought that it all really began with Thomas Harris and Silence of the Lambs, but Berenice, one of um, Poe's stories, also has the, the removal of all the of a female character's teeth in a really unpleasant fashion. The main thing I suppose that he created in Dupin is that important detective who has a less bright assistant to whom things are explained. And that's us, that's the reader. We, we have things uh, explained to us. And there was a Scottish writer who 
She goes, mm, that might be quite a, an idea for a series character. And that is, of course, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. It always amuses me that Ian Rankin, who I managed to get to write a foreword for Crime Fiction, A Reader's Guide, said that as a young man, he thought Conan Doyle was English because the stories are set in London. Nobody can be more English than Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. But of course, the writer is Scottish. Uh, August Dupin is, is the ghost behind all the, the Sherlock Holmes short stories and the novels. Um, in fact, Conan Doyle even references August Dupin rather disparagingly at one point. And the stories are just wonderful. And over the years, with so many writers that I've spoken to, both here, Scandinavian writers, American writers, Conan Doyle is the gold standard and remains so. I wrote a book with um, David Stuart Davis uh, called The Sherlock Holmes Book, and in one chapter, we talked about all the various actors who had played Sherlock Holmes from uh, Basil Rathbone onwards, right up to the 20th century iteration in Benedict Cumberbatch. And uh, many of the great literary detectives, fictional detectives, are essentially ripoffs of Sherlock Holmes. Uh, Hercule Poirot would not exist if it were not for uh, Sherlock Holmes. Um, he's still very influential, influential in a lot of uh, Scandinavian writers, as I said, and he's somebody you can pick up still. Once you can get past the 19th century language, which doesn't take long, you are in that beautiful Victorian world again of handsome cabs and, and mystery. Now, that, in essence, is the first chapter, although I do cover a lot of other things in that chapter, and I'll shortly be getting back to to go on to more modern era. But before that, we've got the British Golden Age and people like Agatha Christie. See you soon.